<laughs> Why are we here? We were supposed to be on a mountain right now. Where do we want to go? Do we want to talk about the proposed California yes, bill? Yes, let's start with that. Okay. We'll say restart required. Mm. Restart required. Let's see. Brian with a Y. When you're considering purchasing an enthusiast car that will be a depreciating asset, what is your math when considering the cost of consumables, maintenance, time, etc.? What are your general thoughts, or do you YOLO and deal with it later? What up, boys and girls? Welcome to the Smoke and Tire Podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Off the Record, OTR, baby. Make sure you got that new code for 2024. The new code. Use Update Your App if you've downloaded that Off the Record app. Or uh, the website is the same, offtherecord.com slash TST. That stays the same. The code on the app is TST. P-O-D, T-S-T, pod, replaces that old code. Make sure you update your code. Off the record, you got to know it by now. You're listening to the show all the time. They help you fight tickets, right? You get a ticket. You don't plead guilty. Pleading guilty is for suckers. You do not plead guilty. It's going to cause you so much more problems, even though you go, eh, I'll pay the fine, I'll move on. There's That's not on. Insurance, court costs, extra fees, potentially messing up your job if you drive for a living. It's not worth it, folks. Get off the record. They will set you up with a qualified attorney in the jurisdiction where you got that ticket. They will fight that ticket for you. You don't have to go to court. You don't have to do anything else besides make an account at offtherecord.com slash TST or download the Off the Record app and use code TSTPOD. Snap a photo or a scan of the ticket. Fill out a couple of basic questions about what happened happened. Uh, describe the incident in your own words, as it were, and they will handle the rest. You don't do anything. And if they don't get those points off your record, you don't have to pay. Money back guarantee. They have an unbelievable success rate. It's not perfect, but it's great. And uh, we have loved having them as a sponsor. I use them myself. I just recently, uh, back in September, got a ticket in Northern California. And uh, last month, got that text Later, I forgot all about it, honestly, and I got that text from off the record, your ticket has been dismissed. What a delightful treat it was. Fantastic, folks. Offtherecord.com slash TST or download the Off the Record app. Have it handy. Use code TSTPOD. That'll get you 10% off all legal services with Off the Record. Man, these guys keep me on the road, keeping us all uh, well represented, and we love them. Do it. All right, folks, on this show, we tried again to film a Koenig Ferrari Testarossa, but it broke. We talk about uh, what went wrong as well as uh, how it, it compared back in the day to uh, tuners like Callaway and Roof. We talk about the new proposed speed limiting law from a man named Wiener. We talk about a uh, Cybertruck differential not quite being available, and we spec out a new EV Porsche Macan. It's a crew show. Welcome to the Smoke and Tire Podcast. Welcome to a surprise crew show. <laughs> Why are we here? We were supposed to be on a mountain right now, filming a uh, Koenig Competition Evo Twin Turbo 1,000 horsepower Testarossa, and it was going very well, right up until I got to... There's, if you go to the top, I posted a picture yeah, of it in uh, my garage last night. There it is, in, in my gym. And uh, it was going well uh, until the... Uh, brake pedal stuck, closed, like the brake. I don't know if I don't know exactly what went wrong, but I was driving up Foothill Boulevard, which is right at the base of the mountain. We were going to go up the hill to film it, and all of a sudden, the car felt like a drag on it. Um, it uh, it felt the the feel. It felt like something was holding the car back. It didn't have didn't have freedom of rolling inertia. And I thought for, my first immediate thought was I have a flat tire. I think I got a flat tire, but I didn't hear anything blow. And so I'm sitting at this light waiting to turn left. And I go, I'm gonna turn left at this light, so I'm off the main road, I'm gonna pull over, I'm gonna get out and check the tires. And then I realized, and then the car wouldn't go. I put it in first and I tried to go and it felt like, 
it felt like I was trying to accelerate like into a wall, like the car just wouldn't go. And I realized the brake pedal was rock hard and something was going on either in the, the master cylinder or in some part of the braking system that had literally locked the calipers. So the car wouldn't, it wouldn't go forward, it wouldn't go in reverse, it was just stuck. And I was in the middle of the fucking road. Fortunately, Zach was there with his car, who blocked the turn lane for me. <laughs> My car became the fall Your guy. Your car became the fall guy. And uh, and I was able to, eventually we realized, we figured out that if we'd put it in reverse once the road cleared and sort of aggressively moved it, we freed the calipers enough because the reverse has more torque than first. Yeah. Because it's, a, it's yeah. a different uh, ratio. It's a lower ratio. So we just kind of like, we're like, well, this can't sit here. So I was like, I, I hope it doesn't break something, but I'm throwing this thing in reverse and fucking popping the clutch. And uh, it freed it enough to move it on the side of the road and got it on a flatbed, and we're going to get it fixed up. This is uh, my buddy Serio, who's been on the show, the Bond Group car dealer, just imported this thing from Japan. Um, and he was like, hey, man, he hit me up. He goes, dude, I'm importing this thing from Japan. I'm going to sell it as part of this heavy hitter Italians collection on Bring a Trailer. You know, they did that Porsche yep. thing uh, last year. It's like 10 special Porsches for the anniversary. So they're doing 10 special Italians. It's like an ETF, I just it's, realized. Yeah. Like it, you bundle them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So this is, you know, a Koenig. Uh, it's, an, it's an 80s. You, go, you can scroll to the next page. You get a better. Now we're just looking at my gym. But get a better better uh, view of it it's a it uh, willie koenig was a guy who uh was unsatisfied with the performance of his ferrari street cars he was like a gentleman driver he raced ferraris he's like why don't the street cars drive more like the race cars so he started developing go fast parts for first uh boxers bbi boxers and then testerosas and a couple other uh, ones as well, and then went on to like Mercedes and and, and he and, and he wasn't like an engineer by trade. He made his money in publishing. Yeah. So he was just like a wealthy gentleman driver. But it's cool that he went. I want to make these fast. I'm sure he hired good people. Yeah. But he became really well known in that yeah. early '80s like tuning circle. Well, let me just tell you that in the 50 miles I drove this car in the morning, uh, before it before it broke, uh, he's not an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think this thing might make a thousand horsepower. It's got turbos on it, uh, and uh, and and once it's warmed up, which takes quite some time, it takes probably twenty five minutes of driving to actually warm this car up properly. Like all the Italians in the eighties, it's clunky when it's cold. So the 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 first ten minutes are just not pleasant. Um, it's loud. Um, it does make whooshy sounds, um, but. You know, I've driven um, the Callaway twin turbo Corvettes. Mm -hmm. I've driven the Roof <laughs> Yellowbird. Um, those are the, these the, the Koenig, Callaway, and Roof. Those are the, they're the kings of the '80s, right? Of the tuning cars. The Callaway car worked perfectly. It was just weird. It was just it it redlined at 5,300 RPM, and it had a power band like a diesel. I mean, literally, it was the it feels low. Like your Bentley. It was so low revving, and it made all this torque. But then the power just died. It had small turbos, big torque. I don't think there was a lot of room for the weird. turbos. It was weird, really weird. And it looked awesome, and the idea of it was awesome. But it was like, nah. But it was mostly a Corvette. You know, they changed the front bumper, they changed the wheels, but like the interior and shit, like. Uh, was was pretty much just uh, yeah that's it, you know it wasn't it it, it had a, it had some different body work on it but um, it was a uh, and it was cool and it's definitely collectible and it worked it was just strange and not what I would and want. this was 1989 it made 382 horsepower which Car and Driver described as staggering because at the time yeah but it was, was like a lot. but it was like five something torque. Like it was like an inverted, go go. What is the torque here? Five sixty-two, three eighty-two horsepower and five sixty-two pounds of torque. This is kind of the Bentley Turbo R. It is uh, the Brooklyn. Yeah, right? like the the the, um, the Turbo R Sport, the end of the end run in ninety-seven. That's basically the same power and torque that that's the funny. Turbo R was making. Yeah. Um, but that's that power band. It's like freight train power band, right? The roof Yellowbird 
is such a complete car, you could fuck you could daily that. I mean, literally, you could you could get in a 1987 roof Yellowbird and you could daily it now, and it would be better than a 930 Turbo. It's 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 so finely engineered. This thing, if you look, this Koenig, the body panels are fiberglass, and there are a lot of them. And if you yeah. to open the, the the clamshell over the engine, you tried it, dude. It's a sixty pound overhead press, no joke. It might it even very be, heavy. it might even be more. Yeah. It's super super heavy. Yeah, um, it feels it feels a little rattly. You know, it's not it's not like tight. Like a Testarossa is actually a very well made thing. Like the door slam mm-hmm. when you drive one around, like a good Testarossa, there should be no squeaks or rattles. It's tight, 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 tight. It's a really Really well-made car. Much better made, actually, and I can say this, than the 308 or the 328. Um, Full-frame doors. Really strong structural car, which is why it's kind of heavy. This feels like it weighs three or 400 pounds more than a Testarossa, because it probably does. Mm-hmm. Um, it also has a cage in it, a leather-wrapped cage behind oh, the seats. It also has these big, cushy... Like you know, seats like which actually seats, right? which are surprisingly electric. comfortable. Yeah. yeah, they are. It's a. It's actually quite comfortable. This it's got car. a stereo. It's got, got a a big stereo. Like it's got. They've added extra speakers. It's got all these weird. I don't think I posted a picture of the interior. Um, uh, we'll have it. So, the mechanical issue that it had was inconvenient because we went to go. We wanted to film it today and we can't. But. It's easily fixable. It will get fixed. You know, they're going to be selling this car and bring a trailer. It'll be sorted by the time they sell it. But, you know, I knew, you know, you ever you ever go out with a girl and from the first five minutes, even before you meet her, you've heard about her through friends and you go, that's going to be a disaster. <laughs> but I but I want to see it. But I want to. And, you know, and then you go through it anyway. I'm sure everyone's had one of those. Whether you're a man or a woman, you've heard about someone or seen them on Tinder or whatever, and you can go, I, I can tell that's going to be a nightmare, but I'm in. That's Serio was like Koenig competition Evo coming off the boat from Japan. Do you want to have a go? And I was like, yes. Aftermarket parts. Uh, yes, I do. I think this is the difference between a tuner car and roof, which was basically mm-hmm. a manufacturer, right? And, 100%. and also... The roof is a simpler car in terms of body structure. They don't, I mean, they do like a little wing here and they yeah. do a little lower apron, but this is like, the shape is completely transformed. When you look at this <laughs> next to a Testarossa, it, it doesn't look anything like it. No. And, and this guy, when Matt was dealing with pulling the car onto the uh, tow truck, <laughs> this guy walks up to me and he goes, he's like, oh, it's a weird looking Z. And I was like, it's a Ferrari. And he looked at me very seriously and he goes, I know a Z when I see one. And he, he was call, he was calling bullshit even though he was full of shit. And I said, look at the engine, man. It's a Ferrari. And he goes, mm. And, he, and then he looked. He saw the engine in the back. Yeah. And then he showed me pictures of his Z, which he'd spent a lot of money on. But the front, these lights, the droop of this, the hood, the shape of it, it, it completely transforms the front from the way it, this it looks fake. Looks. Yeah. It, that's, it's, uh, when I went to England to see, uh, to hang out with that dude, Scott, the Ratarosa yep. guy, who, uh, who I loved. He was a great guy and driving the Ratarosa, which is a test, a real Testarossa that had a very janky homebrew convertible conversion done on it. And the paint is not really there. The no, car's primer. It's gray, right? It's primer. Yeah. It's literally primer. Splotchy primer at that. It looks like shit. It's a Testarossa rat rod convertible. And my favorite thing about that was wherever you would go with it, everyone would think it was fake mm-hmm. and then slowly discover that it was real. And that was a very fun process. And this is the same thing. This looks like a kit car mm-hmm. until you realize, no, no, that is not only is that not a kit car. This, if you know what it is, this car was $590,000 in 1987. A Countach was one fifteen. This was four and a half times the price of a Countach. Wow. And now today in 2024, there's a bunch of cars that you can buy 
I mean, not a you know, if you're a billionaire, if you're if you you know are that level, you can get a Koenigsegg, you can get a Bugatti, you can get a Pagani, you can get all these crazy high end hypercars. There are more million dollar plus cars than ever before, right? right? But back then, a Countach at one hundred and twenty thousand bucks was it. But why was this four times more expensive? Was it numbers? Was it marketing? I mean, granted, at the time, it was making. Two and a half times the horsepower yeah, it's a of a thousand else. horsepower in 1987. I mean, basically, because now you know we've got we've got tuner exotics now also, right? Mm-hmm. You've got Novatech, you've got other you know underground racing and whatever, and 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 it's become more commonplace to tune exotics. These cars were much rarer of then than they are now. The production numbers, people didn't just like make parts for them. Yeah. So everything for this car had to be made from scratch for this car. Like who the fuck made rod and piston upgrades for a Testarossa? Like nobody. Yeah, you might you know? have had to just call like yeah. Who, who and made say, like hey, a heavy this. duty? You know, they built twenty of these. Imagine having to tool up for a run of twenty. True. You With know, the bo- and the body. I mean. The That's handmade, hundred percent handmade. Yeah, and they make they make the mold, and then they make twenty of them. Mm-hmm. You know, markup. But I the mean, rear, the body it's not shown cool. here, but the rear Lexan window. That thing's nice. It's it looks like it's off the F40, but it ain't. Yeah. That's a this is before the F40. And it's shaped nicely. Yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. It if the body was made of carbon, it would be awesome. And I someone told me I don't know if it's true or not, and I'm, we'll find out later by the time we make the video. Someone I found, I read it this morning. Someone at texted me and was like, is that a fiberglass one or a carbon one? The implication was that some were carbon, Ooh. but I don't know that any of them actually were. I, I don't. I den- genuinely don't know. There might have been a competition Evo 2 or something or a, some later car uh, that they did or the, a 512M based car, a 512TR based car that had some carbon Kevlar in it. Yeah, let's see. Kon- oh, Koenig Specials, the website says... The Koenig Competition Evolution had carbon Kevlar body. This um, one doesn't. Th- th- at least the rear is The carbon. rear, there's no fucking way. It's so mm-hmm. heavy. I wonder if this car, because there have been so few Ferrari tuners. I mean, that is, even now, how many companies make twin turbo kits for Lamborghinis? Yeah. Tons of them. Yeah. Ferrari tuners, it's like Novatech. Yeah. I mean, and you can find people that'll put springs on things. But it seems like it's just, it's not verboten. It's just the market's not as strong. Ferrari so people then, are not they're not tuner, tuner people. No, they're 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 right. pres- they're very very much so, anti that. So back then, I'm wondering, going back to when we said he's not he's not an engineer. His, he has a team of engineers. They make body kits. They got very successful. I mean, this company yeah. made shit for lots of people. I wonder if it was like they were just early. They were the only ones doing it. Yeah. And people who wanted a modified Ferrari, it's like, here's where you go. That's your choice. Yeah. There there were not there were fewer options then than there are now, and there's mm-hmm. not a lot of options now. Yeah. Um but it's it is the king, you know, roof, it's like that they're very serious. I mean, not the cars are fun, but like they're not fucking around. Like this is like Cocaine cowboy shit. Like, no disrespect to Willie Koenig, but like, <coughs> this is a car designed by somebody who's on drugs. Guys, gotta take a quick break because I'm gonna plug myself. That's right, we record the podcast at Westside Collector Car Storage, Los Angeles's premier car storage facility, now with a second location in the South Bay. Whether it is temporary or permanent home for your special car west side collector car storage has you covered from secure climate controlled indoor storage to detailing to dent removal to new tires to touch up painting and a whole lot more west side collector car storage is your storage concierge solution for los angeles and more want to ship your car from point to point not in la West Side can do that too. Hit us up at WCCS.com, call email info at WCCS.com, or give us a call. You can find our number on Google Maps. You know how to do it. Uh, West Side Collector Car Storage is here for all of your car concierge needs. That's it. Back to the show. 
and four people that are on drugs. I mean, if you just look at the interior, the interior is like bananas. Like, there's just like knobs and dials all over the place. I don't know what any of them do. They're not labeled. There's the like boost controllers labeled. It's very cool. The boost controller is like a giant a hockey, hockey puck. puck. Yeah. Um, I just found the fuel gauge. I for for I drove this thing last night to make sure it worked before the film. It worked then. I drove it this morning. It wasn't until like. Five minutes before it got on the flatbed that I actually found where the fuel gauge was. Someone at some point added a – there's a screen. Like there's a modern screen put attached to the center console that has – it's the same one from the Gunther Works actually. It's exactly the same screen that shows like engine temp, oil temp, um, rev counter – just like you're, it's like a Motronic or okay. some, some modern thing that was put in somewhat recently because it's a color LED, LED, uh, LED screen. And it was, wow, the company's still around? This is the old, so this website we're looking at is basically like the catalog. Yeah. But if you go down to the body kit, it says carbon Kevlar or, or fiberglass. fiberglass. So, so they probably made a carbon Kevlar body later. Yeah. This one doesn't have it for yeah. sure. No, it's too heavy. Um, it does. Look but anyway, cool. I finally found the fuel gauge. This whole all, all of the fucking morning, I was like, "There's no fuel gauge on this thing. I have no idea how much gas I have in it." So I was concerned about running out of gas up there. Um, That'd be a terrible guessing game. Yeah, well, the the the, um, the Gunther Same mule thing. didn't have a gas right. Cage, fill so. up beforehand and don't drive too much. Yeah, how do we but, find too much? Yeah, so it, I you know I, the I think this car has not been driven very much. It has seventeen thousand kilometers on it in thirty five years. It's not a lot. So I knew go, getting in this thing, I really want to make a video, but I was pretty prepared for something to break. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I woke yeah. up expecting to have a text from you. Well, that first, says, never mind. We were supposed to film it two days ago. That's true, <laughs> and and it didn't leave the garage because uh, we learned that, um, as happened in a lot of '80s cars, particularly Italian cars with aftermarket stereos, whoever put in the stereo wired it to the hot lead rather than to the ignition. Party shouldn't stop, man. Which basically means if you turn the car off, the radio stays on, which uh, killed the battery overnight. So we, so we couldn't, and the battery was we. It couldn't be jumped. Like we, we yeah. jumped it, and it started. But then we disconnected the jump box, and it died it again. Dropped one cylinder a second. It was like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So we replaced the battery, and then it was fine. I mean, we're we're sorting this thing out in real time. By the time somebody buys it, it'll be all right. Um, and and we're it's like a, mechanics. We're like fixing your house. Yeah, it's either you know, it's an important piece of Italian car history. It's totally. really really neat. And um, when it when I was driving on the highway, when it got warm, it was actually somewhat pleasant. Like it's it's reasonably refined. It's actually quite comfortable. The fans work. It didn't overheat. Like the engine seems totally fine. Actually, I only got it into boost like twice because I was actually kind of scared. <laughs> um, and I, at least I was like, if we're gonna boost this thing, I'm gonna wait till we get on the mountain and we're videoing it. Yeah, but also I'm, I'm also you know, I didn't know how much gas I'm I had. Kind of glad we didn't make it to the mountain because if the brake seized up in a turn or Dude, something. Dude, if that happened 25 minutes later and we were on a mountain, it would have been much much more annoying than, yeah, than what corner. actually happened. Yeah. So uh, it's at the shop. It's uh, it's gonna get fixed, and we're gonna try again. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not. Um, it's cra It's crazy. It's, yeah. it, if you if you have seventy five Ferraris already, you need to have one of these in your collection. Totally. It looks really cool. Yeah, the yeah. Whole back end yeah. looks really. Rad. But this is like this is nobody's first Ferrari. Like, no, don't 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 buy this as a first. This shouldn't Ferrari. be your first vintage Ferrari either. No, this is, this is this one's this one's got some some. It's thing. a tuned car. It's a it's an eighties tuned yeah. car, and they were much more willing to compromise for performance back then than people are today. Mm -hmm. Nobody would put up with the kind of shit that's in this car today. Yeah, well, now we have the technology to do things better. Yeah. So, well, and people want their cars to be usable. I mean, you but know. I think even if you even if you strip this car back to stock and try to sell it as a new car, it's oh, less yeah. compromises. Yeah, let alone yeah, yeah. when you add turbos and all yeah. these other things. Yeah. No, you you it is it's this is a very big money car. 
This car is probably going to go it, like just in terms of significance and the willingness of people our age. You know, people our dad, our parents' age, they would never buy a tuner Ferrari. That 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 old guard of Ferrari collector, they're not. They want 100% originality. People our age are much more because we had the poster of this thing, right? So we're we we are much more willing to buy this weird, a uh, not original thing and pay a premium for it because they made, I think, 21 of these. Mm-hmm. I found, I couldn't find an exact number. 21 is the only number I found that came up multiple times. I, between 12 and 21 was what I saw. Um, I think this is a, probably a seven or $800,000 car on, on historical significance and sort of game overness of your Radwood era collection. Yes, very you know? true. Park um, this next to your wide body SEL. Yeah, because they used to they made one of those too. Yeah, so it's really really funky and uh, and definitely different. And you know, if you go to a Ferrari event with this thing, you're the winner. <laughs> <That's> pretty cool. <laughs> you're the winner for sure. Um, but it's it's weird, and um, I really I I can't wait to actually have a go with it when it once it gets um, sorted out. Um, Oh yeah! Speaking of selling things at auction, our client is selling. Uh, oh, this by the time oh, this okay. show goes up, this auction might end. Ends right, Thursday. I'm just, so I'm just curious why that was on your. your because Instagram it's a second. client. The, our client who passed away. That's mm. we're selling his uh, his mini at no reserve. Nice little car, actually. It's, I still uh, remember when you picked Bam up at the airport with one of those, and you had to put the the suitcase on your lap, his not, lap. Not great for luggage. Terrible. Yeah, not Nico good for cool. luggage. Um, Right, right. Oh, so that's uh, the Koenig TR. Um, in in the opposite of that, <laughs> where do we want to go? Do we want to talk about the proposed California? Yes, bill? let's start with that. Okay, uh, we kind of saw this one coming on the David Zipper podcast from a couple weeks ago. Um, we kind of discussed. We discussed. That idea. We yeah. discussed the idea of this, and now uh, a bill has been proposed in the in the Senate. Uh, by a guy who's, of course, his last name is Wiener, um, that could electronically limit uh, your car's speed based on a GPS uh, comparison of your location to the speed limit on the road to 10 miles an hour over the limit, arguing Mm -hmm. that there is no uh, legitimate reason that a car would ever need to go uh, more than 10 miles an hour over the limit, which is an interesting position to take. Um, I disagree with it, obviously, um, for a couple of reasons. One, it's like surveillance state kind of shit, which I'm not really for. Mm-hmm. Uh, two is it brings up the question of, well, who set the speed limit and why? Right, which is an interesting process. Right. And in, in many cases, speed limits are not set because of safety, but to, to raise revenue, um, and I think that that the the process of setting speed limits would have to be much more democratic than it is. I think it would have to be more scientific. Yeah, right. That too. Um, and also, uh, I think I think that the number of I think the the the, the guy's reasoning connects speeding to crashes and deaths in a way that is correlation and not necessarily causation. I don't I'd like to see his rationale for saying, well, he said he basically said 3000 speeding tickets were issued. Right. There's no you reason know, for that to happen. There's no yeah. reason for that to happen. Well, it's like this is already a a crime. You know, like it's it's a crime. It's the, those tickets were enforced. Um, it's not like the tickets aren't being enforced. It's, um, this would be a funny time where uh, the CHP and drivers are on the same side where because the CHP would lose a lot of revenue. Yeah, and, and so both of us could be on the same side of the picket. <laughs> and there's also, you know, as we we learned when I had the Ford Raptor that was limited, that had a hard limiter on it, mm-hmm. that there are there are times where squirting to a, a, a speed that is maybe illegal but not immoral in order to safely make a pass on a two lane road where passing is allowed, is prudent. Well, there are passing areas where the rate at which your car can accelerate or the speed it can achieve definitely determines the safety. Because if you're in 
You're in oncoming too long. That can't pass this semi truck. Like, and people will say, like, you shouldn't pass it. Well, if if the semi truck is going up a mountain and it's literally going ten miles an hour under the speed limit, yeah, everyone wants to pass that truck. But how long does it take you to get around that truck? Yeah, and what's the speed limit? The other thing uh, that concerns me is GPS location services are not really that precise yet. Mm-hmm. They're pretty good, but if you're driving on a highway. Sometimes our Google thinks we're on the frontage road next yeah. to it and vice versa. Right. So is it going to set the speed limit and think you're over there and suddenly it slows you down to 48 or to 50 yeah. when you're supposed to be going 75? I mean, there's the technological uh, side of it. Um, it just it just sucks. That's the other thing is it just sucks. It's hard. You know, it, it's like sometimes the flow of traffic is – and around here is more than 15 miles per hour over the speed limit. And it's like everyone's going that speed. Yeah. Everyone's doing 80 and a 65. So yeah. to back to your topic, does that mean they need to raise speed limits because cars are safer now and everyone and they're easier to drive at these speeds than they were back in the 50s? Or do we have to just accept the new normal that we're all going to be going 74 and a half miles per hour everywhere? I mean, you know? it's... And also, if this is starting with a certain... They're not going to be able to retroactively do this. Right. So if it's starting with a new model year car, so okay, so any every car that's a 2027 and up can mm-hmm. only go 80, but I have a 2025 911 turbo. Right. So I can go 180. Right. It's not a very good solution <laughs> to the problem, at least in the it, short term. I mean, there's, yeah, it's it, it 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 might prevent certain people from doing that, but I just think there's a there's a lot of practical holes in it. Mm-hmm. B I don't. I don't think his the rationale is right. I think there's other ways that to improve safety besides setting because how often are crashes and 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 speed uh, directly directly related versus speed plus something else? I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I know mean, either. I, you know, I know that the term speed is a factor. So if, if someone crashes and they're speeding, the accident will be more significant yes. based on the velocity of, course. of the car. Of course. Yeah, of course. But I don't know how frequent that is the main cause versus, you know, did they, I don't know, were they distracted, something else? Yeah. There, there's too many factors with accidents. I just, I, I don't I don't see this working. I mean, I think the guy's getting, make, trying to make a name for himself or whatever, and, 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 but I just don't see it working. I mean, how many people are in, how many drivers are there in California? I want to look at the percentage because there's 3,000 tickets issued. This is uh, like, is it asking OEMs a lot and is it asking humans to adjust their behavior for what could be a one hundredth of a percent of the population of California? Um, well, it was like Koopman said, how much, you know, how much resources are you willing to spend in order to make how much of a change? Right. All right. right. There are 27 million licensed drivers in the United States. Uh, oh, wait, Sorry. No, 232 million. 27 million in California. 27 million. Okay. So, 3,000. That's not much. It's not. Well, divided by, yeah, this is. That seems low. That is, is that right? Go scroll down on this article thousandth. on the drive. The ten thousandth of a percent. The, dri- that, of the, the how, is that? Did I read that wrong? Is it how many tickets? Wait, keep going. I read this somewhere. The how many, California CHP in 2020. Uh... Oh, leave, leave, 3 thousand tickets for going over 100 miles an hour. Okay. But that was in 2020. When 2020, no one, right. yeah. the roads were empty, and a lot of people were going really, really fast. The CHP wrote more tickets for people going over 100, I think, than they had in the, the ever. previous— But ever. there was nobody yeah. on the road. No, I know. Yeah. It was a unprecedented level yeah. of speed that people were hitting frequently. So I, I think if you compare that to 2022 or 2023, I think you would find a significant reduction. Or 2019— in in that yeah i think that's a selective use of data um i I don't yeah i mean i can also just say i don't like it because i don't like it i mean i can also i'm i I, we can also just not like it i think it's harder when we go to like what are the facts of our argument but we don't like it and i think a lot of people won't like it the the big brother thing of like now you can only drive this fast now and then there's also the proposal to have technology put in cars where it can be disabled if the car thinks you are inebriated. Yeah. But that's going to be very hard to program perfectly, you know, per our conversation with Philip Koopman. Yeah. Um, I got an interesting email from somebody after the David Zipper show that said, and I, and this is this, I don't know how scientific this is, but he said that when, when 
America had a 55 mile an hour national speed limit. And, um, and the government decided that no speedometer could go over 85, which if you're not in America seems insane, but we actually did have that for a while. Mm -hmm. um, the Back to the Future DeLorean's speedometer had to be modified to go up to 95 because the regular DeLorean came with an 85 mile an hour speedometer and had to get to 88. So he said at that time, American cars that were designed for American roads handled poorly, mm -hmm. had bad brakes, didn't have good power, didn't have good chassis, and just were, were, were worse objectively in every way than European cars, particularly German cars, that were designed for Autobahn travel, right? And so the, a Mercedes or a Porsche or a BMW com from the 1980s compared to a Pontiac from the 1980s would have better handling, better brakes, they were safer, they had better body structures, and that made them safer to drive, even if you were driving at lower speeds. And the concern would be if you say no car can ever go over 80, then it would atrophy. Well, then, then maybe car companies will say, well, why do we need to put these great brakes in mm -hmm. a car if the car never has to go over 80? Why do we have to make the car handle well at speed if it never has to go over its speed? And you end up not making cars that can handle those higher speeds, which if you do that, it makes them drive better and help you avoid accidents at lower speeds all the time. Now, I don't, that that may not be a 100% factual based thing, but it's a thought that if you, well, that a yeah, car think, that can handle higher speeds yeah. will be safer at lower speeds. I think that's very true. Yeah. Because I think the amount of engineering that has to go into a car that may go to the Autobahn or is developed near the Autobahn not because everyone's going to go 150 miles per hour all the time, but all the components need to be able to handle the stresses of that. Right. Therefore, it will surely drive better at lower speeds and things will be more robust yeah. and the brakes will be better because they have to be able to stop you safely from right. 150. So they're still going to stop you better from 72. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so anyway, I'm not, I'm not into this. Um, there are some other things actually in this guy's bill that I think are good. Um, they're adding a uh, side under underride guards for trucks, improved crosswalks, curb extensions, and those could help people. Th I'm okay. That's fine. Those are those are non-technological ways to improve safety that don't impede that you know that aren't big brothery. Yeah. Uh, so you it's know, tough because. You know, we saw that crash, like uh, the Vegas thing. The guy was going like 100 and yeah. whatever. You know, if uh, – that's a slippery slope. I was going to say if it was if it was limited to 60 in areas where the speed limit is 35, so you can pass someone if you need to or whatever. But like – Look, those huge crashes slope. make news mm -hmm. nationally, and obviously they are tragic, but that's a very small percentage of crashes. True. It's a, that's a real – I mean, there's – there's not a lot of people out there that are going 150 and a 35. No, I know. I think it goes back to uh, David Zipper's question. He was like, well, what's the benefit of the car being able to do that? You know, like, that's that's fair. Doesn't need to, like, we don't need to be able to go 150 miles per hour on, I mean, there's no, sorry, there's no justifiable way I can go. We should be able to do that or have the ability to do that. I mean, other but, than saying, well, th there are places to do that safely. Right. I'm saying in city limits or yeah. something like that. Yeah. I mean, but... I think, yeah, to, to your point, the GPS isn't that accurate. Right. You can have a high-speed road next to a low-speed road, and the GPS might confuse the two and fucking slam on the brakes. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a good reason to not, to not have that. Yeah. Uh, a lot of navigation still frequently I'm surprised when it goes, oh, you're on the exit ramp. Like, yeah. I am definitely on the highway still. Yeah. Yeah. It happens a lot to us too. Yeah. So anyway, I'm not, I'm not necessarily about that. I I'd be surprised if this went through. Maybe I can't even, optimistic. I mean, so. even California. If people talk <laughs> mad shit, or liberal bullshit, like bro, you ever been to Central California? Oh yeah, like, away from the coast of the cities, it's it's very it's very Republican. Yeah, yeah. They're 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 not they're not interested in a guy named Wiener trying to fucking put GPS trackers on their cars that that restrict their speed. It'll they're be interesting not about to see that. what I mean. Even. You know what? I don't know if this is a party lines thing, but I, I'd be surprised to see if a lot of people were into this because I think people don't like having their, you know, quote, freedom 
yeah. limited in like really obvious ways. And this yeah. just seems like a step no one's going to like. Yeah. Um, so there's that. Um, speaking of things that are uh, connected, cars that are connected, uh, kind of a funny anecdote that uh, is, the, is our, new, our new normal, right? Not, can't, can't have a week without talking about Cybertruck and what a fucking <laughs> embarrassment this thing is. Um, there's a, uh, apparently there's a, you need an over-the-air update eventually to eventually. Lock, lock the differential. Now, it is, I think this is the, the two-motor truck, right, which has an actual differential as opposed to the, the tri-motor, which has independent rear, rear motors. Right. So they so simulate a lock diff, yeah. Well, yeah, well, you don't need a lock diff right. if you have two motors. But but this has a, a diff that will lock eventually. Right. That, that's the idea. It doesn't have the, uh, this is the future, yeah. Locking differential, this is a, a menu that popped up on someone's Cybertruck screen, and it says locking differential controls coming soon. So it's something they're working on. Part of their, you know, whatever is advertised. I think this is hilarious because as someone who sometimes plays Call of Duty with some friends, um, frequently the game that you have purchased with money mm -hmm. almost every day will say restart required, mm. restart required. And it's a big complaint compared to other things. But this is like you bought the thing. It has the, the technology they say it does. Not, yeah. Almost. Not quite. There's Soon. not a lot of companies out there that are willing to sell you a product that is not feature complete. I mean, well, I mean, anything with, like, digital technology, which is, like, everything. But, you know, games, software, there's always this stuff. But it's – I don't know if I've seen it – I don't know if I've seen this with a car where it's, like, the feature that's on the sheet yeah. is almost ready. Yeah. I th This is the only company that does this. Right. No other company that I've ever heard of will advertise a car with a thing that and then deliver the car without the thing. I feel like this is more. The only one I've ever seen actually FSD. was the Riv, uh, oh. Rivian's kitchen, which the ki the slide True. out kitchen, which I don't think they took any money for. They just said it was going to be a thing that was coming, and then they bailed on it. Lotus Electra, uh, Electra, the radar system. Oh, really? Yeah. Radar cruise or radar? No, no, no like the the crazy pop out radar system that they're going to have oh. on it. That was uh, they couldn't tell me when that would be operational. But they're but are they selling electres? Yeah. Can you buy an electre right yeah. now? Have you, you seen can. one in America? No. I don't yeah. know if they're delivered here yet, but you can buy one. Oh, okay. Um, are they but are they charging people for it now? They can't be. Or is it a standard it's a standard feature or it's an optional feature and they're just le not letting people buy it. Yeah, the lidar, that's right. It had the pop out thing. I don't know if the hardware's in it and uh -huh. they don't have the software or if like cuz they have the the thing on the roof that pops up yeah. and the things on the side that pop out like all these pods. I think it's that's they're like, it will be level four or five autonomous at some point, and it will have LiDAR for it. They should really not but. say things like that. That's very dumb. Okay, so this is the second time that they I don't know I don't know if yeah. they've actually delivered, you know, any of those cars yet. Oops. Um but this one this is just in a long line of things that they say are real. They just didn't they didn't need this <laughs> this press. It's like it's great. It just it was so funny every to day see that it. goes by. God, I am. I feel a little better about what a hunk of shit this thing is. It's truck two point <laughs> um, Let's see. Oh yeah, I'm I'm holding it in my hand. By the time people hear this uh, podcast, listen to watch this podcast, which will be next Thursday, the first Thursday, February first, our tactile turn pen collaboration will be live to the public. Patrons, if you're hearing this show early, you can get it now. Uh, after we're done with this show, Zach, I'm going to put mm -hmm. this live with a special code for our patrons to buy it. Okay. 10% discount. These are beautiful. Uh, our collaboration with Tactile Turn and uh, they have uh, uh, this titanium. Oh, that's not the finished one. That's a prototype. This is the finished one. It's titanium, uh, diamond-like coating, uh, black pen with this amazing brass-coated uh, 
what do you call this thing? A bolt action. Feels like a bolt. Feels like a bolt action rifle. Very very fun. It says the smoking tire down the uh, down the clip, and it is a Pilot G2 gel cartridge. And we've learned uh, from my financial people that gel cartridges are better for writing checks with because they're more fraud resistant. So it comes with that. Um, I love handwriting. Obviously, you guys see my notebook every fucking show. Um, I handwrite everything, and so a great pen is clutch. And uh, we've collaborated with a cool American company to make a cool pen. And we're only doing 100. So if the patrons scoop them all up, there won't be any left. But I hope there will be a few left for the public. And uh, we'll put the link in the, in the show description to buy them. Um, and patrons will be able to get them today. Uh, and uh, everyone else will be able to get them Thursday, February 1st, uh, which is really, really fun. I'm very excited about these pens. They're really nice. They're They're... Expensive for a pen, but not expensive for a really nice pen. It'd be $149, which is a lot of money to spend on a pen. But it's like, this will last the rest of your life. It is it is solid. Yeah, interchangeable cartridges, uh, of course. And, uh, I feel and like you could break a window with it. You probably like, could like, break a window. You and, could probably yeah. fucking mallet it yeah. through something if you had to. But I'm excited. I think doing collaborations with products um, and companies that I really like using their stuff, that's that's cool. Look for our Porsche collabs. Yeah. Right? <laughs> exactly. Um, okay. Should we talk uh, briefly about uh, the Gunther? Because we already did on the pro show, but it's yeah, worth we can talking hit it quickly because the video is video. up. Today, and by today, I mean Thursday, February 1st. Yes. Not today. Oh, or should we talk about Electric Macan? Uh, Let's talk about Electric Macan. It is Topical. Electric Macan came out uh, yesterday. Um, The launch was in Singapore. There's a lot more people who went to the launch than I thought. It's not like a drive launch. It's like a reveal launch. Oh. So, but there was a lot of media that that was in Singapore. Nobody called my ass. Maybe it's because they know I only like to drive the car. They know that. Yes. They don't bother flying me places where I can't drive Yeah, to walk around it. They know how you feel. They know. told them. (laughs) Um, It looks looks really nice. It's got um, got, uh, sort of visual cues both from the Taycan and actually I think from my – my 718 Spider. I think the front end looks looks a lot like they've pulled cues from the 718 Spider or 718 GT4. Actually, uh, that 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 area, the the front air dam. I think oh, that yeah. actually looks oh, quite mm-hmm. a lot like like a vertically stretched version of my Spider, doesn't it? A little bit, yeah, yeah. It's aggressive. It's nice. Uh, but they've smoothed the sides, make it nice and uh, aerodynamic, and comes in a regular uh, Macan Four and then a Macan Turbo, which course turbo is electric and not not turbo uh looks like you can do uh what's the power levels it's like uh it's like 400 or so 400 for the for the four and then 600 680 yeah 100 kilowatt battery they say 380 miles of range that's a bunch that's a lot it's a lot and if that's what porsche is saying it'll probably do more porsche does not mean when they when they started talking about range with the tycon Everybody smokes the range estimate. Um, if you're driving it like, you yeah, know, like, a, like a regular, I can demonstrate that for work. yeah, uh, yeah. I blew I blew thirty percent over the range estimate for the 4s. I think I did three oh five in yeah. a regular four once. Uh, yeah, I, I did three three fifteen in the in the 4s. Went to Palm Springs and back, and then had to lap LA a couple times because I had so this much. This is like fifty percent more range than your Mustang. Yeah, that's exciting. Your Machi. Um, I I. Uh, part of the reason I bought the Bentley was to hold me over until this became available. Um, it is going to be kind of expensive. You know, the 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 four is going to be like 70, 80 grand, mm. and the turbo is going to be like a hundred, a hundred and twenty grand. It's kind wow. of expensive. Yeah, but it's you're but you're going to get a lot. You're getting a Taycan crossover. Yeah, basically. I mean, a Taycan with a more usable back seat. And a hatchback, that's nice to me. Well, the Taycan Sport Turismo had a good backseat. It did. Right. But it was also really expensive. Yeah, like, how much ty- that was like 100, 150 grand. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're expensive. True. They'll sell so many of these. They will sell a lot. But are they still having problems with the Taycan electrical system? Quietly, don't know. But, okay. I don't know. I, I haven't heard anything recently. And I was just in South Carolina with my dealer. Um, and he said that he said it's been okay. He was kind of, he was not happy that of how much, uh, there's, 
they made them build like a a battery storage shed like away from their main building mm-hmm. so that if battery packs need replacement they're stored like off site oh just in case just in case there's a fire or yeah. something which is probably smart yeah i get it um but i mean yeah i i, I won't i probably won't try to get the first one <laughs> Let me just say that. Um, and I don't think deliveries are going to start until probably the fall. This is this is just the, hey, look at this. But this will this will definitely be our next electric car. I'm, I'm waiting for this one as opposed to just leasing another Ford or something right now. These are going to be cool as shit. I bet they're going to drive awesome. Rear steer bet, is yeah, also available on the turbo. Um, I don't need the turn. The, apparently, the four will do zero to sixty in five seconds, which is absolutely quick enough for any reasonable uh, reason. And then the the turbo will be zero to sixty in the low threes. So that'll be that'll be properly quick. And I bet that's what Porsche says. I bet it beats it. Yeah, I mean, I I'm rooting for it, and like I'm not trying to throw shade at Taycan. It's just something that we have seen their Consumer Reports average went down a little bit. Uh, yeah, the early cars the early were not cars. good. Right. They, had, they were having all kinds of issues. Which, you know, new car, new technology, TV yeah. problems always happen. So I ho- hopefully they got it sorted out because this seems like, you know, it's a good looking EV crossover from a luxury yeah. brand. I mean, and they're selling, the, they're, they're going to continue selling gas ones too. This is not a, this isn't like the gas Macan is dead. Um, this is, this is the, the top of the Macan heap you'll still be able to get you probably won't be able to get the biggest gas engine anymore you'll probably mm-hmm. be able to get the base one and then maybe the s i don't mm-hmm. know if they're eliminating the six cylinder i don't they can't be eliminating the six cylinder entirely i thought that, actually i thought that was covered was that covered uh, uh there it is that's first that's the uh no that's that's wrong Anyway. Anyway. I thought I was talking about it, but maybe not. Oops. Um, I'm excited. I think it's. I think it looks nice. Uh, I'm sure the interior's great. The interior um, looks, I mean, it looks like a It looks like, the, looks like Tycon and uh, go, go, Here, go back. We have many photos. If you can ever find them, quicker mouse. I can find them. They're right here. Yeah, it looks exactly like the, um, the Cayenne interior, just a little smaller. Look, buttons. They have some button some real buttons. Yeah. yeah, for temp and fan, I love it. They're the little metal ones. They yeah. feel great. The toggles, yep. those are very Big good. Fan. Yeah, and correct. the new the new Cayenne was nice when I had it on Thanksgiving, <clears throat> but unless you really need people in the back seat all the time, too big. Too big. Yeah, doesn't, not, doesn't make much of a difference. Macan is the right size for most most things. I bet it drives really good. I'm excited for this. I think it's gonna be nice. What color are you gonna get yours in? I don't know. I'm not. I mean, I wouldn't. Lease. I wouldn't do a PTS. Yeah, but PTS lease is a bad idea. No, yeah, no PTS lease. Speaking but, of leasing, someone asked in the comments, not trying to jump ahead to questions, but they said, "Would you le- lease a Lucid because you can lease them now for 18 months?" For how much? <laughs> it's probably they're not cheap cars. I bet the lease is expensive. Lease. I mean, uh, you can lease. For seven fifty a month. No Lucid way. Pure. Really? Wow. For seven fifty, dude. My fucking <clears throat> Mach E is seven fifty nine. Is it really? Yeah. I thought it was cheaper than that. No. Uh, I also I, I don't know what the down payment is. So you got to see what go. the down is. So Air Pure All Wheel Drive, seven forty nine a month. Yeah, but how much is that? Sixty seven. Sixty seven hundred do it signing. So I got my my Mach E was a uh, thousand down. A thousand down and seven fifty nine a month. Is this okay? Wait, for eight, yeah, for eighteen months, for thirty six months, eighty five hundred do it signing. Uh that's, that's a pretty dude. That's a pretty good deal, actually. I mean, I I would encourage people to explore that. That's a pretty good deal. Uh, for thirty six months. But I don't. I've never driven the pure. I mean, it's probably still quick, and that's the pure all wheel drive. So total cost for that 36 months lease is $35,500. Okay, so the total cost for my Mach E lease was $28,000. Wow. Yeah. But that's 30 but but that's 36 months. Right now I'm yeah, saying yeah, oh, I'm saying they're pretty oh, close. Yeah, yeah, Seven grand they are. different. Yeah. And because we, we know the depreciation on these 
is unfortunately. Yeah, I wouldn't want to take that on. Yeah, right. I would. I would definitely not buy a Lucid. That's yeah. That's a recipe for disaster. Eighteen month lease though. It's if, not bad. You know, if I had, if I'd have to be making a lot of money, but that is a nice car. What is what is cool the uh, battery size on the Pure? Is that the short? Is that a shorter range car? I don't really. I don't. I haven't. I've only looked at the the Grand Touring and the. So the Pure mm. is. 430 go. horsepower. Oh, it's still full range. 420 miles. 420 miles. Oh, that's all right. 016, 4.5. You know, that's that's a pretty, uh, it's got, uh, yeah, it's a pretty fucking decent deal. If it deal. has the same suspension as the Ooh, GT we drove, I, does that thing Yeah, I think it does. Fucking great. I think it does. Because that's not, none of them have air suspension. Right, yeah, they're all, all they're all fixed all suspension. Coilover. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, and there's air pure that have more power. More Eighteen range. months for seven forty nine, huh? Seven seventy nine, seven forty nine, seven forty nine, seven forty nine, with sixty seven hundred down. Yeah, that's pretty good. I wonder if you can can you then claim a tax credit? Or is that after? Oh, that's so after. After uh, it says a parentheses after tax credit. Does that tax credit go to the dealership or go to you? Because you're leasing it, but then the money just goes right to them. I, do, right? So. I don't know exactly how it works. You can, I think you can get a partial credit or something for a lease. Okay. But that's a pretty good deal. You could lose. This is the one we tested basically, and you could lease that. That's twelve, eleven ninety nine a month. Twelve hundred a month with yeah. ten grand down. I mean, it's it's not a, that even that isn't a terrible lease deal because it's a nice car. If you had that kind of money mm -hmm. to spend, it's not a horrible choice. But the pure at seven forty nine a month, that's a really good deal. I see so few of them around town, unfortunately. Yeah. Because they're so good. Seven forty nine. I mean that's you're basically that's pretty good. I'm impressed. How many cars can I get you into today, Matt? I've got you down from a con. I'll I've tell got you, you what. Down for a loose at least. I'm I'm in Bentley. No, no, we don't I we're we're going Bentley until the Macan becomes available. That's gonna be the move. When? Hopefully. Hopefully that's all we need. We'll see. Let's see. Macan EV will be available. I think fall. Okay. Put the order in now. Yeah. Get see to the front. I don't want to be in the front. I want to. I want to be like in the middle. <laughs> you well, want to be in front of, of, of Mach E. Yeah. And look how that went. Right, yeah, it wasn't that machine. terrible, but there were some things. Right. There's always there some were, things. There were a few things. Yeah. yeah. But. Man, what color would be the right? What would be a good color for a Macan EV? They have so many good colors. I know. Miami blue's great. They have nice blues. I wonder what's on the. You don't want to go paint a sample on something like this. You want to go. You want to see what's on the. Is there a configurator up yet? Can you build one yet? Might have Let's to build one. Get a green one. We should build. We should at least see what kind of colors they have. Like if they, they have, have huh? They do. Should we build one on this program? Is that a good use of our of our radio dollar? Well, uh, radio not so much because it's right. a visual well, medium. Let's at least video. let the at least let the video people I will see it. Find, all, right, all right, so Macan Four. We'll start there. Let's click, let's select Macan Four. We don't need turbo. Need okay, now let's let's just start on the right. Exterior colors. Those are the boring ones. Oh, the dreams. Ooh, frozen blue metallic. Yes, frozen blue metallic. That's the blue version of frozen berry metallic. Is, do they have Tycons in that color? Yes. Okay, that's and they look around. awesome. Okay, that's frozen awesome. blue metallic, twelve hundred and fifty dollars. Oak Ooh. green. That's the same as Jeff's GT3 Touring we just I drove. Go, oak green. We'll go or a, or, or Aventurine. Do you like Aventurine? That's a nine nine three color. Not, You're not into I'm it. Not into that. Okay. What does papaya look like? No. Frozen, frozen blue, blue metallic. Yeah. All right. Pro Provence is like a lavender. Is that like a grayish it looks like lavender? A gray lavender? Oh, that no. looks very lavender. Yeah, no. Okay, frozen blue metallic, twelve hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, let's go go down. Continue, continue on. I like frozen blue. Copper the back a lot. Um, all right, okay. we're going down. Uh, I don't like those wheels at these all. Are so bad. All a bunch of these. Most of these wheels are not. I think good. they're very aerodynamic. They probably are. Uh, well. Uh, those shit. These wheels are not good. Five grand for RS Spider wheels. Guess what? HRE baby, <laughs> go on HRE. Do they make an EV friendly wheel? I'm sure they do. Here, get the off road wheels. 
21 inch Macan. Those five spokes. Those are pretty good. That's three thousand dollars. The five sp true. five spoke looks good. You're losing range though, because this has the cover. I know. So go with the go with the standard standard twenties. We'll call HRE and we'll get some. We'll get 20s better looking are wheels. Standard. What a world. Yeah. Uh, oh. Wheel colors. Can we change the wheel color? Oh yeah. Wheels painted high gloss black. No, all right, so we're not doing that. None oh, of that. Get him in neodyme. Wheels painted exterior color, dude. Frozen blue metallic fucking wheels. <laughs> uh, to that, you have to get the good. You have to get the twenty twos. Yeah, no, we're skipping that. No, it's okay. Not skip not that. Yeah. Uh, wheels painted in deviated exterior color. Okay. Uh, interior in black, probably right. Standard. Yeah. We don't need to spend money. Black limestone. What's limestone beige interior? How's that looking? Mm. Uh, I don't think so. Right. That's not. That's not. Pretty I good. think that's a no. Okay. Keep going. Black. Ooh, black blackberry. Go down one. What was this? Yeah. What's that about? Uh, Does that work with frozen blue? I'd have to see it in person because it's kind yeah. of purplish. Yeah. Which is a bold choice. Yeah. In any. But it car. could be fun. Um. But with a. That's a question for Sarah Trimble, someone right. who has style. We need design experience, me. right? Okay, so just look standard standard interior in black, zero dollars. Okay, keep going. Uh, extended leather, no, we don't need that. Truffle brown. Mm. Ooh, fourteen way comfort memory seats. You need memory because of yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Or how about the eighteen way adaptives for four hundred extra dollars? Yeah, adaptive seats. Ooh, yeah, those are the good seats. Those have the shoulder. Look, they've got the shoulder support. Yeah, I'm trying to go. Yeah, there okay. we go. All right. Uh, heated rear seats, no. Ventilated seats front, yes. yes. Oh, massage ventilated for thirteen hundred. Uh, that's a little decadent. Uh, I don't think we need massage. Oh, it won't let me. It won't let me choose vented seats. Oh, you have to go extended leather. Yeah. Uh, get... Okay, so get leather package. Leather right? package, not extended. Yeah, leather package. Accept changes. All right, so you got to get leather to get vented seats. Uh, no uh, premium package. I don't really even know what the premium package is. Well, let's click info, let's man. See let's see what so, it is. Let's see if you like it. Bose stereo LED matrix. Oh, so you can get premium package with all that stuff, but it would delete some other things. So if you add that. Which is all, these are all the options you wanted. Yeah. So maybe you just get that as a package and it would eliminate some other things. LED matrix headlights, Bose stereo. But will it still add? Thirty nine hundred bucks. Yeah. Because now we got to take things off because we added, right? So we don't include it in premium. Go up. So those are take oh, those so off. You can get yeah. The 14 go, so way. yeah. So you get the fourteen way instead of the eighteen way. Fine. Okay. And vented seats come with it too. Yeah. All right. So where are we at now? Eighty six thousand five hundred dollars. No. Holy shit! This is fifteen hundred dollars a month. Oh, that's to buy. Off road design? No. Exterior. Oh, in exterior color. Interior. Exterior options. Exclusive manufacturer. I'm not, I'm not exclusive manufacturing anything on this. Window trim in high gloss black. Oh, side, side blades. Oh, side mm. blades painted. $680. Let's click that. Let's see how that looks. Mm, I might leave it black. I kind of don't like either one. So <laughs> I just think. How about side blades, graphic, and though? side blades in high gloss black? Instead of plastic black. That's better. Better. Okay, better high gloss that. black. All right. How about high? We need high gloss black window trim, though, too. Go up. Wait, where's that? Up. Window trim, high gloss black. You got to match. You got to matchy matchy there. I'm, I want to get you the door puddle. No, absolutely no door light projectors. How will you know what car you're getting into? <laughs> power, charge, power charge port cover. What? Why would there not be? It doesn't have one? Maybe it's the kind where it like goes whoop, it opens itself. Oh, power? power? Yeah, no, we don't want no, no power. Okay. Door okay. handles, no. Okay, so that's it. That's all we really want. Performance. What performance option is there? Oh, sports electric, sports sound, sport chrono. We, no, we don't have any of that shit. Rear steer. I don't need rear steer in this car. Not for $2,000. I don't think that's... Okay, so now we're at $87,810. Go to oh go to assistance systems. I definitely want to make sure radar cruise. Uh, I don't. I have to find out if radar cruise is standard, or if you have to get that Porsche Inno Drive with active lane keep. Let's assume that radar cruise is standard. All right. Summary. 
Okay, so my 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 build is eighty seven thousand eight hundred. That's that's expensive. I mean, the Mach E was fifty four thousand dollars. This is Ooh, a lot more expensive. That is a lot. I think we're gonna have to do some saving before <laughs> before I buy one of these goddamn things. This is a really expensive car. Yeah, you have to sell, that's you a very sell. expensive. Well, car. if you sell the Bentley when these are out, then that's true. I could tr I could sell the Bentley then and offset jump. part of it, but that would be sad, wouldn't it? I'm glad to know that Frozen Blue Metallic is on the color color spectrum, though. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. We'll have to see. We'll have to see if that Blackberry leather is good. It could be. It has potential for being very cool. It depends. I think it really depends on the exterior. Yeah, color. yeah, for you, sure. You need to, like, hit for up the sure. tailor that made your wedding suit and be like, what does this color go with? Yeah. You know what will determine whether or not we get this car? If Hannah gets a goddamn job. <laughs> because if we go back to being dual income, no kids, right. and not single income, no kids, this is no problem. Mm -hmm. Single income, no kids, is uh, that's a lot of car. Well, you're more like 1.6 income. Right. I, I'm, have... I, we are dual income. It's just with one person. <laughs> <laughs> we, need to be go, we need to go back to tri income. Yeah. <laughs> we need 3x income. Um, and also, we're not making this mistake ever again. We, we will go on the press launch first and drive it. That, that was the fatal flaw of the Focus RS. Mm -hmm. It is never happening again. We must, we must drive first and then put in an order. I'm not putting in an order for a goddamn thing without uh, driving it first. Anything uh, worth talking about on the old Patreon there, Zach? We got a bunch of questions. Oh, we did? I'm yeah, um, good. Thanks many. to our patrons for getting in this game last minute. Yeah, they showed up quick. They showed up they rapido. Showed up did you encourage them that it was a last minute show or you just fucking... I, yeah, I said there was a problem with the vehicle. So... <laughs> Uh, let's see. Patreon, of course, if you want to ask questions on the show, get uh, early access to our uh, collabs with a little discount, get an ad-free listening experience, and a whole lot more. It is patreon.com slash the smoking tire podcast. You patrons are really keeping this thing going. We're going to have some new stuff uh, for you with the Patreon in 2024. We have many ideas. Uh, the Kurt May says, uh, what would you consider to be the rear drive version of the Elantra N or Civic Type R? It seems like maybe M240i with a stick, um, but any other thoughts? Well, price-wise, I mean, BRZ. I mean, the, the rear drive version of the car, like, that doesn't really make any sense because part of those cars' characters is that they're front drive. They're also sedans. Well, I so think, I think if they're trying to say what's the affordable, fun thing, like that is not too expensive. I mean, I mean nobody makes a rear drive sedan anymore that is fun and engaging and affordable. The best you could do is like a BMW 330. That might be M340. like 340. They still make that one? M340 is like a $65,000 <clears> car. That's true. The 330, can you get the 330, the four-cylinder with the th four-cylinder? Is it a, a three-series with the four-cylinder? I don't know if you can. Maybe you can. I've never looked. But, like, that might be that might be it. Um, e you can? Yes. Okay, so maybe that. Um, the, the, the BMW 230i, but, you know, those are coupes or, like, the the... The Z, the Nissan Z, the maybe. The 330i sedan is 44,000 to start. Makes yeah. 255 horsepower. Can you get it with a manual? Mm -hmm. Let's find out. If you can, that would be pretty excellent. That would be something maybe that's worth our, worth our time. Um, but there's, there are, people don't buy rear-wheel drive sedans. I mean, they just. They, they don't. They buy all-wheel drive sedans, and it's easier to make a front-wheel drive-based car with all-wheel drive than it is to do a rear-drive car. So you're better off, like, going all-wheel drive and saying, well, it's the WRX or it's the GR Corolla. Um, I suppose the WRX is all-wheel drive, but it's longitudinal, so that could kind of kind of get you there. I think but the 330i is only auto? one engine, one transmission. No, that's engine. boring. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Uh, and I I don't have the answer to his other question. Uh, Flannel Bob says, what's left on your personal automotive bucket list for each of you, both in cars to drive and things to accomplish in a car? I mean, so I mean, many. There's, there's a million cars I fucking want to drive. There's a bunch of 
crazy stuff like from the old stuff. I really want to drive a Daytona coupe. Yeah. Or even if it's a good replica, I'll take it. McLaren F1, he says, I mean, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot. There, uh, there's Monster truck. Yeah. Trophy truck. <laughs> How there's long lots this of, lots of cool classic stuff. I'd like to drive like a Duesenberg. I'd like to go drive. I saw this guy when I was in um, Germany two years ago. This dude rolled up with a fucking big cigar and a big Wilford Brimley mustache and a blower Bentley and was driving up the Swiss Alps. Like, that seemed like a time. I know. would like to do a rally, not one with, like, necessarily a co-driver, but, a, like, a stage rally. Mm -hmm. And it could be the Colorado one or the, the rad one they do in uh, the U.K., that um, Chris did it had some really great footage about a month ago, like something like that, where it's not too serious, but I would mm -hmm. love to do a dirt rally from A to B. Uh, yeah, I'd like to try some stage rally. I'd like to do the Milli Milia uh, in a in a in like a gull wing or something like that. Um, a lot of people have gotten to do that, and they never asked me. But um, I'd like to. It's not automotive, but I'd like to do another transatlantic sailing trip, like on a racing oh, yeah. a racing boat. That's cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. Those are some, those are some good ones. Uh, David says, what is a license? <laughs> I recently saw a Civic Type R with the personal personalized license plate, C-R-I-M-P-I-E. <laughs> what is a plate that you've seen that made you think, wow, they really let that through? Uh well, I put I saw this one like three weeks ago on a green um, 718 Spider, mm. and it was said snow job. That's a good one. And if you want to see like uh, Corbin or Cora puts up lots of these every week, and there are some amazing things people get away with. Yeah, I mean, my favorite one is the one that I got away with back in New York, which was uh, I was submitted as makeup zero zero, but it was make you poo, which I thought was hysterical. Mm -hmm. I still think on the it, Cobra, right? on the Cobra, I still think that's hysterical. <laughs> uh, I'm sure there's other ones, but I. I definitely don't keep them in. I have way too many things to think about to keep them in my brain for more than five seconds. I just I take photos of them or I forget them and I'll send yeah. them to friends. But yeah. there's a lot in uh, in L.A. Uh, James Cowley says, "What is the appropriate response when getting stuck behind a left lane camper?" Pass on the right, son. Yeah, right lane is the new left lane, unfortunately. Yeah, but thankfully, many states and more states are passing laws about camping in the left lane. Yeah, uh, it, it's I, I don't tailgate. I give them I give them a left blinker first. Mm -hmm. uh, I then give a couple of flashes. If that doesn't work, I pass on the right. Apparently, yeah. that is very frowned upon in UK, Europe. I mean, mm -hmm. in, we know it's illegal in the autobahn, but like they call it the undertake. Yeah, and then they'll they'll come here, the British journalists, and they'll go, "Wow, everyone's just doing that here." Like, yeah. you have to. Our our driver training is so bad, and our our. We have a weird American ego. That. I think yeah. it's that. It's not the driver training. It's people going, I'm going as fast as one should go. Yeah. That or they're totally oblivious to everything around them. That, um, yeah. Or they, um, they just uh, – this weird thing that Americans do is they don't want to be behind another car. Yeah. So they'll go to whatever lane – has the longest sight line, True. which is often the left lane. And often that – Sight line is longer because you're going too fucking slow for the lane. It's so true. They don't. There's it, this is awful where they don't. They they're going the same speed as the car in the middle lane, but rather than just ducking behind them and going that speed or going in front of them and going that speed, they'll sit next to them and go that speed rather than go behind because they don't want to be behind somebody. Yeah, yeah. Just crazy. Yeah, that's true. Crazy. Uh, Let's see. Ryan Arbogast says, what are some of the most memorable special versions of already great cars, either OEM or aftermarket? Well, I mean, uh, we you know, roof comes to mind. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of really good modifiers for Porsche stuff, BBI. Uh... I think it's got to be a complete, a complete version, special version of a car. Ooh, okay. So not just like a modified I mean, there's thing. like the Canapa 959s that are like 800 horsepower. Uh, those sort of, those lean into what the 959 was already very good at, right? Uh, oh, that, that was the, 
the guys on the roof. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're doing. They're changing our HVAC filters on the roof. Sorry. Um, I mean that crazy the Viper company you drove. What are they? Uh, oh, um, sorry, the C. Calvo. Yeah, the like, Calvo Vipers. That was. I really like the proliferation of sequential boxes into modified cars mm-hmm. now because that used to only be race cars because they were so expensive, mm-hmm. and now. They're popping up all over the place. Ron Zaris has one in his psychotic Evo. Yeah, I mean, and he—that's a—it's like we're we're bridging this cool gap between runway or race or full rally car and street car, and it's awesome. Yeah, uh, that's not a special edition. That's just a company that's doing cool, crazy shit. Yeah, um, the 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 mines uh, built by legends GTRs are oh, exceptional. Yeah. The one I drove. I don't know why that video did so bad because that car was awesome it's true that nobody watched that video but that car was fucking epic what a great great I mean, car cars was. like there's so many good racing teams and companies in japan mm-hmm. that just built really good looking shit yeah i drove that garage saurus gtr that had a sequential in it that was epic um sequential i just saw a thing on instagram a guy put a bmw dct out of an f80 m3 in an r33 gtr just pretty rad whoa yeah it's real cool Remember oh that guy God, had the that D- so much sense. The guy had the DCT in the Pikes Peak car. Yeah, it was real cool. And it worked really well. Yeah, he had an E30, right? Yeah, the crazy car. Uh huh. Holy shit! But that's brilliant. Yeah. Nine six. Just, I don't know. I, I don't like, know why ha, how hard it is to make that work, but it was pretty rad. It's probably the computing that's the challenging part. Mm-hmm. I bet the mating the two together. It's like there's there seems to be an adapter plate for any transmission to any engine yeah. in the world. Yeah. Um, that's cool. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean the the special versions. I mean, all of the pre merger AMG stuff. I yeah, mean, all of the all of the AMG anything with the hammer engine, the the whether it's the wagon or the sedan or the the coupe, all of those fantastic, great cars, and then the the, the engine just is makes it even more Mercedes y. Mm-hmm. Those are oh those Alpina, or Al- yeah. yeah. Yeah, particularly did you? Yeah. Uh, I just saw it on. It didn't sell on Bring a Trailer, unfortunately. Uh, Alpina's press car, their B seven, which was the six series from the eighties. It was the M six, but with like a stroker engine and maybe a turbo on it. It uh, it did not sell on Bring a Trailer, but I saw it when I was in Germany at Alpina, and it was unbelievable. It was like. Fucking so mint. It had oh, no miles on it, I huh? I think it's this one. It was like a Alpina. Uh, no. Oh. That's a B6. This was a B7. Let me see. Um, but Al, uh, uh, it might be. Yeah, let's see what that one. See, uh, Keep going. That one, 1978 B7 Turbo Coupe. Whoa. Yeah, this is this was their uh, oh man, was their press car. These are so good looking. Yeah, I don't know why that would not get to a hundred grand. Well, bid to a hundred. B seven zero zero one. Like, how does? Uh, oh, it has a hundred and eighty. This is not the one I saw in Germany. I apologize. Oh. They must have a different one in Germany. This was their press car, but it now has a hundred and eighty seven thousand kilometers on it. The one in That's Germany was was looks just like this one. But it has like eighteen hundred kilometers on it. Still very cool. But I now I understand why it did not get more than hundred K. It's yeah. got it's got a lot of miles on it. But still, what a great piece of history. Very cool. And I bet that would be epic to drive. Um Christian says, Will Spike and Zuckerman come by on TST? Yeah, they they come by once or twice a year. I'm gonna be on Spike this weekend. Um Alejandro says Zuckerman, because he has a day job, can only record like Saturday nights at 7 p.m., which is which is why I have to go over there oh, at Saturday yeah. nights at 7 p.m. to do it. That's, we don't like to record then, so that's not. That's I boring. hadn't seen him in two years. I was like, hey man, I really just I'm really excited for your car collection. All, you know all the stuff you posted. He goes, oh, my financial situation now is fucking going down. And yeah, he's it's, it's not great. That's so funny. It's not great. Um, <laughs> Alejandro said, I noticed on a road trip that my car's digital speedometer was reading three to four miles an hour faster than what Google Maps GPS said my speed was. Uh, instead of reducing speed limits, why not have car manufacturers make the speedometer just read high? Some of them do that by some accident. Of them, some of them do that. <laughs> some of them do that already. Well, isn't there a law that like a speedometer has to be 
accurate or or high. optimistic. Yeah, it yeah. can't be under, yeah. otherwise you get super, Yeah, if you yeah. read low, if it reads low, there's liability. Right. So they always they always put in a little bit of error there uh, to to make you think you're going a little quicker yeah. than than you are. So that's that's actually pretty standard. And sometimes they are very very optimistic. My um, my Lamborghini one. I'd say some of the Italians. My Lamborghini one was like 10, 12 miles an hour optimistic. No. It's like, it's not great. Car's still quick, but. Uh, but yeah, it's not. I think in, in the Alejandro says that people wouldn't notice. I think that's fair, but the thing is that people notice the traffic around them. So mm-hmm. someone with a normal speedo would go, let's call it 80 and a 65, and everyone just, the collective driving happens. People yeah. just go the speed limit they feel safe going. Yeah. So the, the number doesn't really matter. Yeah. Yesterday I had to go downtown for something in the afternoon. I rode the Vespa, and it was like, God, without a, without a fucking Vespa. This would have been just such misery. Lane mm-hmm. split for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. Um, I've uh, Kurt says thoughts. I don't. I've never seen this car you're talking about, but just in general, thoughts on a Challenger Hellcat Pikes Peak car. Um, I mean, I don't want to start a challenge like going up Pikes Peak from the bottom of a hole. <laughs> What do you like, mean? I wouldn't want to build a car that's for a hill climb that's enormous and and doesn't handle that great. Mm. It just mm. seems like if I actually wanted to do well at Pikes Peak, I would start with a car that was smaller and handled better. It just seems it seems like you're giving yourself an extra challenge. Now, if this I company think did pretty well, but. I hear. I I agree with you. I'm not saying you couldn't yeah. do well. You could do. You can do well. But like, it's given the choice of all the cars on the planet, I wouldn't want to do a hill climb in a huge car. Yeah, this thing sounds nasty. Of when course, it, rolls it does. Pits. Holy shit! But uh, yeah, it does look gigantic. And like, are. no disrespect to this company. Mm-hmm. Like, if this company is in the business of selling parts and service and upgrades for Hellcats, well, then, of course, they're racing a Hellcat. So in 2020, this car went uh, third in class and 11th overall, which is very fat in in the 45 vehicle field in 2020. I mean, that's great. Wow. Good for them. Imagine minute, um, imagine they ran a smaller car that handled better. They'd probably win. <laughs> like That's impressive. Yeah, it's cool. And it looks great. It's a, it's a good looking car. But I, uh, there, I have no interest in, in trying to race using the wrong car. Like I don't, I don't think there's like a good novelty in that when you could so easily die. Oh, you're like, if I'm gonna <laughs> die, I'm gonna yeah. do it in a car that's light that I feel that yeah yeah yeah. Like well, cool like if, 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 like that Pikes Peak is a game of fucking inches, man. You know, it's a narrow road. True, it's bumpy, like. I, I I want a car that's like a little smaller so I can make a little more use of the road. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, let's see. Brian with a Y. When you're considering purchasing an enthusiast car that will be a depreciating asset, what is your math when considering the cost of consumables, maintenance, time, et cetera? What are your general thoughts or do you YOLO and deal with it later? Uh well, I try not to buy cars that are depreciating assets. I try. Uh, I haven't I've never really l- lost money on an enthusiast car. I'm trying to think. I'm sure I have. Like including I mean, maintenance the co- or work or anything? Well. You're not- talking just purchase price to sale price. I'm trying to think of, of if I've ever actually lost money. I mean, insur- I suppose if you factor in insurance and, and, every, and all the fuel and everything, it's probably like a, much— Well, like the Raptor, is that an insurance car? Or it was just my car. car yeah. And actually, that, had, that, that held on great. The, I, I you sold it for I bought that car. I bought that car for fifty four grand and <laughs> sold it with 49,000 miles on it for 37,000 bucks. That was a great, great fucking return for a daily driver car that was used for work. Um DeLorean was profitable, Skyline was profitable, Fox Body profitable. The Corvette wasn't, but I held on to it for 16 years and bought it new. Uh, true. And I wouldn't have bought that car again today. That's a diff- that's kind of a different thing. 
Uh, the Porsche was profitable. The Safari was profitable. The I'm sure there's something I'm forgetting, but your uh, the M3 was that even? Even that was even money. Um, so yeah, I I sup I mean I buy cars that I feel like. I don't do I don't sit down and make a spreadsheet, but I buy cars where I feel like if I can own this car for just the cost of keeping it running, mm -hmm. that's probably a good thing. I'm willing to pay, you know, a couple grand a year out of pocket to own a Ferrari if I get my investment back on the other end. It's that's money well spent. Especially when we're looking at lease numbers and you yeah. go, Okay, well if you lease I mean, you're Mach-E. Yeah. Norm, normal car. Total normal car. Toaster. 28 grand out costing, the door. Right. Don't see it back. Right. But like, yeah, I would I would try to buy cars that you can own for just the cost of running them. For insurance, if you can, insurance, tires, maintenance, and gas, if you can then get out of the car for, for, your, for your investment, aside from those things, that's a good buy. Mm -hmm. You know? Justin Gerard says, of all the cars you've driven, what handled the worst? The worst worst? The worst? I mean... I mean, a, a fucking RV. Like, you know, yeah. Cruise America RV. Definitely Cruise America RV. Worst. That was the worst, probably by a lot. Uh, of, uh, you know, cars? I mean, cars from the 50s, Cadillacs and mm -hmm. things. So much steering input to go straight. Yeah. Uh, those are bad. Bronco, a, 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 a classic uh, Bronco. I mean, m by far most likely to run into a row of parked cars. Very difficult to go straight in one of those. Garbage. Hummer H1, easy to go straight. That steering yeah, is that, surprisingly accurate. Yeah, Hummer Holy H1. Shit. Hummer H1 is is terrible, but in at some specific things, not bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Big vans like like each Ford E and the the Chevy like S. Uh, S whatever vans, mm -hmm. those things stink. Um, but like, not something you'd be like. I've never driven something that was like a sports car, but couldn't handle for shit. I mean, worst handling sports car I've ever driven, probably the Alpha Four C. Yeah, I was talking to some people on Twitter about that. And just, Alpha Four Cs are just not good. Ours were, was it two hundred and fifty pounds heavier than the UK ones? Yeah. Um, different alignments by accident too. Yeah, yeah they just. The tires they're, were weird. They're not good at all. Uh, we had, well, it's, I wouldn't, this wasn't the worst. This was just, we tried to take an Audi S7 on a racetrack once, and it just got all the, all the, every control system was like, yeah, no, you fucking don't. You know what? I wouldn't call that the worst, though, because on, on the road, that's fine. Someone, I was not impressed by the first ND Miata, and I was at a track with Travis Akulski, and they he loved it, and I was like, this thing's way too soft, and it just leans over too much. And then when we tested the RF later, mm -hmm. engine aside, which is better, but I just liked that suspension so much better. That was one where my friends were like, this is great, and I said, I, I don't, it's not for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, as SG90, go. Uh, uh, you've you've said that you avoid view, reviewing modified Subarus because they tend to all feel the same regardless of the modifications. Why do you think that's the case? And are there other cars that suffer from a similar issue? What could you do to make one of these cars feel more distinct? I just think it's a. They're. I don't know why they all feel the same. I mean, I I feel like. There's a there's a limit to how much power you can make. Yep. And after a certain point, people start talking about power, but it's really just more like noise. It just turns into more noise and not more actual speed. Um and it's just people aren't who modify Subarus, they're not like changing the geometries. They're just gonna go, well, I'm gonna use this kind of damper versus this kind of damper. And ultimately, it's a high-performance damper. And so if you were to line up 10 of them and go back to back to back to back to back to back to back on a racetrack, maybe you could feel the difference. But if I drive one on Tuesday and one on Saturday and one next week and one the week after that, they just end up being mm -hmm. kind of the same. Are there other cars you've driven that are feel more separated and more distinct? Or is that just a case where you drove so many STIs? I just drove so versus, many of them. Yeah. And 
what felt different, what you could do to make them different is like the one with the JDM two liter engine versus the US engine, that felt different. Mm -hmm. That was a completely different power band. It revved differently. It had different vibrations and pulses. Um, it, it was a totally different experience. Or the one I drove that was the, t the Legacy that had the sequential turbos, that was totally different. But to just take a WRX and, you know, you put, well, it's got a Crawford exhaust versus a Perrin exhaust. Versus, it's like, it's the same. Mm -hmm. It's just, this, it's all this fucking same. And so that it, using one part versus another part, but when that part is just an OEM bolt-on replacement, you know, if, if, you, if you're talking about certain cars where you're actually changing geometries, you know, you're widening the track and you're doing, you're, you're moving pickup points and you're doing, then you, that's when you start to make the cars feel different. Mm -hmm. But if you're just using brand X damper versus brand Y damper, it's such a fucking gray area that if you're not back to back, it's just going to be the same. It becomes a taste thing. You know, if someone goes, I like it stiffer, I like it softer, then you could feel that. But outside of that, when the powertrain, especially when the car's turbocharged already, like yeah. I drove those two different 370Zs. One of them actually was at the gas station this morning. One was supercharged aftermarket, one was twin turbocharged aftermarket. So they felt very distinct and different. But when the cars start turbocharged, yeah. you can only put so big a turbo on those the STI motors before they explode. Right. So. And it's not like, you know, if you were talking about a, a V8 car where this guy did a, a supercharger and then this guy did twin turbos and then this guy did NA, uh, cam, N -N -A cams. cams. Now, now you're really talking differences. Mm -hmm. Or in in if you're talking about Mustangs, well, you're, this guy's running a, a staggered setup and this guy's running a square setup. And now those cars are going to handle drastically differently. Mm -hmm. um, but with Subarus, there's just less that you can do to really make them feel different. Um, I mean, there aren't a lot of other cars that feel that way. I would say almost all of the tuned F80 M3s I drove felt more or less the same. That is to say, bad. F80 M3s are not good tuned. They're Almost all of them are worse. It may be a community thing where the, the community that modifies the cars to a certain extent, they go to the, the same form and mm -hmm. they see the same ideas and they kind of build them similarly, and it's harder to crack out of that. Yeah. I don't know. Just none of them, none of them felt much faster than stock, they do, they all just got louder. Was, well, I think a lot of those cars, they don't feel faster until your top third, fourth, fifth gear. Yeah, maybe. Because they're like runway cars, so you're not going to experience that in the canyon. Oh, the, the BMWs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, BMWs. yeah. The Subarus also, they felt a little faster than stock, but then it stopped at a certain point, and then it was just noise. Um, Paul says, what car brand will go out of business next? Oof. I mean, Lucid's high up there unfortunately they they're on yeah they came to mind they have a lot i don't know how much money they have i don't know what their runway is or whatever, yeah how much cash they have i'm surprised how many vinfasts i'm seeing they have a an office now down oh, the they street, do right by that uh charter school across uh -huh. from anything i just saw a sign i was like what the fuck fisker i i i would say <laughs> i would say lucid will outlast fisker for sure Fisker seems yeah seems not good. I talked to somebody uh, up on the hill last week that did um, uh, drivers did drivers assistant calibration for Fisker, and he's like, I got there and it was not a good situation. Mm. He's like, and then after a couple months, the situation did not improve and I Ooh. left, and oh, now okay. I'm not there anymore. Yeah, it was that that seems like a like it's not going to end well. Well, because those cars are having trouble. In the press fleet, whereas yeah. the Lucids, the press loves them. Yeah, you know, the the crowd doesn't, or they're they're just a little bit. Well, they the just first. don't know. They they're don't unsure. Know it, and they're very expensive. Right, but the Fiskers, they're they're not they're not doing good yeah, at all. They look good. I saw one on the road, which I was surprised. I can't by, believe but, you saw one. Well, it could be a, a engineer. Yeah. Um. All right. Uh, John Blackburn says three hour commute once or twice a week. I've done 30,000 miles in a year. I like my Model 3, but not big enough for the family, and insurance costs outweigh any gas savings. How interesting that is. You'd rather have a gas car huh. because the insurance – and Teslas are crazy expensive to insure. Are they? Yeah. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. 
They're because the parts costs are super high. A crash causes way more expensive damage than a, a do- yeah sensors, stuff like that. I didn't even think of that because yeah. Sarah Testro when she's like, I like this thing. Yeah. And she, insurance, get an insurance car, quote. But, ooh, They're real okay. expensive. Yeah. Uh, he wants a four door, comfortable seats, quiet rides, Apple CarPlay, and decent lane keeping. Thirty to fifty thousand bucks. Oh, I mean, with a used car. Yeah. Use Lexus ES. Maybe even a brand new Lexus yeah. ES. That car is great. Yeah, Lexus Lexus ES is where it's at. Yo, the I don't know about the back seat, but the new Prius <laughs> might. I didn't sit back there. That car is. I sat also in the, nice. I sat in the back seat yeah. of the new Prius. I did. If the front seat driver is not tall, then the back seat is fine. If the front seat driver is really lounging out, then the back seat might be a little tight. Yeah. I think it was probably a little roomier than a Model 3. And you could get a new a brand new one for like 35. Like the plug-in Prius is is, is 42. Right. 42 43. Yeah. The prime. I might check out the Prius honestly. Um I mean even when I, you know, if you're charging it at home every night, you're going your local driving is going to be electric and even if you're going 3 hours down the highway, you're going to be getting in the in the high 40s low 50s mile yeah. per gallon. I I would consider a Prius, honestly. Yeah. That is the car for this person's job mm-hmm. or this this situation. Yeah. Other than that, I mean, maybe the, maybe the Rav Four Hybrid might do it. That's what or Sarah's the Lexus looking at. Lexus ES Hybrid. I sat in the back of the Rav Four Hybrid when we tested one. I mean, that gets forty three miles per gallon. Yeah. Uh, city, it's forty highway, and you can get a new one. They start at thirty five, but with all the shit you want, it's like forty two. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Andy in Colorado says, looks like the first gen Macan EV is going to have CCS port rather than the Tesla port. Uh, maybe Porsche will move to the newer one in 2025. How critical is that for a Macan EV? Do adapters limit charging speed? I don't think they do. That'll be interesting to see. I don't don't know. It certainly wouldn't affect whether I bought one or not. I don't give a shit. And I I would suspect that most – the Macan is a luxury car, and I would suspect that the higher end the luxury car, the more likely people do most of their charging at home. Mm -hmm. And charging publicly is a sort of once-in-a-while thing. But, um, I mean, you can use adapters at – you're going to be able to use adapters at the superchargers, like so. It may not go, it may not flow 270 kilowatts through an adapter, but it'll probably do over 100. I feel like if the adapter is made to a certain specification where it can transmit that electricity at that speed, any slowdown would be caused by the discussion between the car and the charger itself. Mm-hmm. You know, like does Tesla limit it? Quietly because there it's a competitor's car, or does the car being charged not have the right architecture to take that power that quickly? Like mm-hmm. I think it'll be stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Y2K Punk says, uh, as per my que- la- question on the last show, um, uh, is there added value for the Koenig Ferrari going through the TST shakedown? I mean. There will, assuming the car is fixed and works, there will absolutely be added value if there's a video of me driving in the canyons that is, uh, did it added on the Bring a Trailer listing? Well, and yeah, and saying now that this thing's sorted enough to drive like this, yeah, that's very good for sure. Additionally, if you bought, he says, if you bought an enthusiast car and did some upgrades, would there be an upside if you video documented it and then sold on a Bring a Trailer or Cars and Bids? That's literally what we did with our car giveaways. Yeah, basically, it's exactly the same thing. Would there be an upside if we sold it at auction? Probably not. Um, I mean, those cars at auction, I mean, stock, unless it's a brand name, I mean, a Koenig, is, this is a this is a, a part of history, if it's a brand name tuner build, but if it's just a car that we modified and then sold, we'd be better off if we wanted to flip cars at auction, finding original examples or finding ones that are put back to stock. Because people are just more comfortable buying that. Yeah, I'd rather modify the car and then do the giveaway thing, yeah. so that you know people that follow us and watch us could maybe get the car for fifty bucks instead of having to buy it for X dollars on an auction site. Yeah, and frankly, to, you know, to be perfectly honest, there's more money in it for us too. I mean, we make we make more money doing a car giveaway 
assuming it's the right car, than we would make by buying a car and then selling it at auction. Yeah, there's just the, the, a lot more money. I mean, that's that's why people do car giveaways and they don't just tune cars and then flip them on auction sites. Right. Yeah. Uh, thank you all for listening. For our patrons listening early, meaning what's today, the 26th? Yep. If you're listening between the 26th and the 1st, um, you'll be able to hit the link in the uh, show notes or it's actually going to be on the Patreon page to buy uh, one of the 100 tactile turn smoking tire collab pens. They're really, really nice. They're beautiful to write with. They feel great in your hand, and they make a good little fidgety thing with this bolt action. I'm really, really about that. Uh, everybody else, you'll be able to get it on February 1st when this show goes up for the public. Thanks to our patrons for the questions. Hopefully this Koenig Ferrari gets sorted out and we get to drive it again before it goes back to auction, and we'll have a cool video of that. And we will see you guys next time. Bye.